Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a fifth grade topic, multiplying decimals. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below, so use that to skip ahead to any part of this video you think is most interesting. Remember, if you ever have a question about what you see here today, you can always put it in the comment box below and I'd love to be able to read that and help you as much as I possibly can. If you have questions about your own homework like see on this channel, remember you can visit me on my Facebook page, at Tutumi Senpai, and tell me all about it there. When you find this video helpful, remember to leave a like. It really helps YouTube understand that this video provided you some help and it could potentially do that for others as well. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, without further ado, let's jump straight into multiplying these decimals. Previously, I gave you a video on how to add and subtract decimals. Now, when we're trying to determine how to multiply decimals, we're going to attack it the same type of way. We're going to start with something we do know how to do and use that to figure out something we don't know how to do. Now, what don't we know how to do? Well, I assume we don't know how to multiply decimals or else you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Now we have to figure out what we do know how to do and how that's going to help us figure out how to multiply these decimals. If you recall my previous video on how to add and subtract decimals, if you haven't seen that, I'll put it up here. We use simple addition and subtraction to add and subtract decimals. We're going to use the same type of method for this. If we know how to multiply numbers, we're going to use that in order to figure out how to multiply decimals. The cool thing about this is it doesn't matter how you choose to multiply. I know there's a lot of different ways that you could potentially multiply numbers. As long as you know how to multiply, you can multiply decimals with these simple steps. Let's say we have this example here, 1.2 times 5.2. Our first step is to count and record how many total decimal spots we have. So first step, count and record. And now the record part is very important because you don't want to forget anything. So count and record the number of decimal places. Now what I mean by that is how many decimal spots do we have after the decimal? So in this one we have one, this one we have one, so total is going to be two. So count and record the, I'll say the total number of decimal places, the total number of decimal places. And I would say put it off to the side, hence the record. We don't want to just simply count because counting is not going to be enough. We want to count and record it. So I would say put a little box here and we can call this the decimal counter box. You know, it doesn't really matter what you call it. I'm going to call it the decimal counter and I'm going to put it somewhere so I would always see it. So I don't want to forget it. And I count up and record how many decimal spots I have in total. One here, one here. So we have a two here. So a decimal counter is two. That is the first step. Second step. Ignore decimals and multiply. Simple as that. Ignore all your decimals and multiply your number. Now you might be asking, how are we going to multiply decimals if we're ignoring the decimals? Don't worry, we handle that in the third step. And that third step is going to be, once you finish multiplying your numbers without the decimals, we're going to use our decimal counter to put the decimal in the correct spot. So let's go over this again. We have three steps here. First, we count and record the total number of decimal places. And we put this to the side, hence the record part. We counted them, bam, we have two. Now we ignore and multiply. We ignore the decimals and then we multiply. If you know how to multiply, it doesn't matter how you choose to do so, just do it. Once you have your answer, you're gonna use your decimal counter in order to put the decimal back into your answer. Then you're done. Let's look at this with an example. Let's use the example that we just saw. 1.2 times 5.2. We have our steps here. I'll put them in shorthand. Count and record is step number one. Ignore and multiply is step number two. And insert decimal is step number three. So we're going to count and record. And we've already done this. We said that this is going to be two decimal spots. So we put a box here. And this is going to be our decimal counter. I'm just going to write decimal counter so we know what that is decimal counter. So we have two spots, one, two, decimal counter. Bam, step number one. Now we ignore and multiply. So I'm going to set it up like this, 12 
times 52. We have no decimal here. We ignore the decimal. Now we're going to multiply. You can choose to multiply any way you want. I'm going to stack them on top. But if you have a different way of doing that, do that. Except for calculator, because then you just plug the whole thing in your calculator. You don't even need to do all of this. However, if you're going to be multiplying by hand, do it however you feel most comfortable. So we're going to multiply this. So we get. 624. Now that we have an answer, we can now insert our decimal. What do I mean by that? We're going to use our decimal counter. And remember, we said we found this number by figuring out the total number of decimal spots from our initial example. We're going to use this to put our decimal back into our answer. This says we have a decimal with two things behind it. So if our answer was 624, we're going to put the decimal where? Here? Here, here, or here. Where are we going to put our decimal? If the answer is 624, which one makes sense? If we're starting from the right, we can go 1, 2 and do it that way. Or if you simply remember this is one spot, that's one spot. So what does it mean to have two spots? That means you have two numbers after your decimal. You can do it that way. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just know that that two means there should be two decimal places following that decimal. So the answer for this is 6.24. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have this example here, 1.375 times 8. Now you might be looking at this and saying this doesn't necessarily fall into our category. We're supposed to be multiplying decimals. 8 is not a decimal. No worries. This works for this as well. Whole numbers fit into this mode. We're going to follow the same steps and do what we have to do. So how many decimals do we have? Well, this is three here, right? Three. Because there's nothing here, we just stop there. Now, I know you might be saying there's an understood zero. And technically, you can have an infinite number of zeros afterwards. So we don't actually count any of those zeros. Those zeros would inflate this number, and that doesn't really help us at all. So we did number one. Step number two, ignore our decimals and multiply. So we have pretty much 1,375 times 8. Step 2 has given us the answer of 11,000. Now we move on to step 3 in which we have to put our decimal back in using our decimal counter. Now we put our entire answer here. 11,000 is our entire answer from step 2. Using our decimal counter on this exact number, we need to have three decimal places. Now, that's three decimal places. I put the decimal here. So our answer for this question is going to be simply 11. You don't have to write the rest of those zeros. Our answer is simply 11. Let's look at one more example in which we have a lot more decimal places. Let's say we have this example here in which we have 0 0.781 times 0 0.101. Going from our first step, we count and record how many total decimal places we have. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have six total decimal places and we move on to our second step of ignoring the decimal and then multiplying. So this is going to turn into 781 and this is going to turn into 101. And then we're going to multiply this out. So when you multiply this, you get 78,881. So by ignoring and multiplying, 78,881 is the resulting answer. Now we insert our decimal back in using our decimal counter. This decimal counter lets us know we need to have six spots. However, do you see a problem here? We only have five digits here. We don't have six. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to put a zero in front and then put a decimal. If you ever don't have enough digits for your decimal counter, you simply add zeros before your first number. So seven was our first number from our answer, but we had five spaces. We needed six spaces after the decimal. So we put a zero before seven. This is going to be our answer. So you see, as long as you know how to multiply, you can use what you know to do something you may not have known, which was multiplying decimals. Simply break down your process into these three steps, count how many decimal places you have, put that to the side. We don't want to forget that, especially because we're dropping the decimal while we're multiplying. We don't want to forget and think this is our final answer. We have to come back and put our decimal back in, but we don't just throw it anywhere. 
we use our decimal counter to put it in the correct spot. Sometimes it's very easy. Sometimes we have to put a little bit more into it. However, using our decimal counter, we're always gonna get the right spot. So I hope you're following today's examples and I hope you realize that multiplying decimals is just like multiplying regular numbers. You just have an additional step of making sure you have your decimal in the correct spot. And if you do the simple steps that I gave you, you will never miss a beat. If you have any questions about what you saw today, remember you can put them in the comment box below. I'd love to be able to help you as much as I possibly can. If you have questions about your own homework that's here on this channel, remember you can visit me on Facebook at Tutor Me Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you haven't done so already, remember to leave a like. It really helps YouTube know that this video has provided value to you and could potentially do the same for someone else. And don't forget, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really hoping to help with your homework, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this is another session of Tutor Me Senpai.